Well, welcome back everybody and you're still tuned in right here on Open Studio, of course on DS TV channel 263 with myself, I go by the name of Brad and today we are chatting all about saving water right there in Mzanzi. And before the break we spoke to uh, Mr. Dion who tell, uh, told us all about how we can save water. Right about now though, we are guests joined in studio by yet another amazing guest who goes by the name of Mr. Farouk. Welcome to Open Studio. Thank you very much and thanks for allowing this to be the opportunity. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Farouk, before we get into uh, our discussion, continuing our discussion with regards to how we can save water, um, can you just briefly explain to the viewers um, a little bit about yourself and also the work that you are doing? Yes, I'm with the City of Cape Town's Water and Sanitation Department and I'm also the Communication Officer for the department. So, um, you know, uh, when we speak about water, which is obviously, um, you know, very topical at this point in time, given the situation around the country. Um, it's, it's very, very important, you know, that uh, everyone gets to know how to play their part. Yeah, and, uh, <coughs> Mr. Farouk, um, would you say that people should worry about the water situation that's happening in the Western Cape? I think when we look at the water situation in the Western Cape, uh, you know, we need to be mindful of the fact that the Western Cape, uh, you know, has different sort of climates, you know, in, 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 in scattered across the, the Western Cape itself. Um, within, the, uh, we, within the metropole itself, you know, the city takes care of the water um, yeah. situation because we are the major service, um, water service provider in this area um, for the city of Cape Town, as well as, um, you know, providing some water to the Drakenstein municipality and also to um, the Stellenbosch um, okay. municipality. So uh, when, when we look at the water situation, we should look at it uh, from the perspective that if you have access to water, you must consider yourself a very fortunate person. Yeah. And you must also um, realize that, you know, that is a constitutional right, you know, but with that right comes a responsibility. Definitely. So all of us have a role to play, you know, when, so when people come together and they, you know, they forge these collaborations um, sort of just to, um, conscientize people about the plight of water and the need to save and conserve water during the education and that. Those uh, efforts, you know, is commendable efforts. So, yes, we always need to be concerned about yeah. the application of our water. And uh, for that purposes, the city has a um, dedicated um, unit, you know, that addresses the issue of water conservation in and amongst, um, you know, um, the residents' business as well as in the agricultural and commercial sectors. So, um, and this unit sits within uh, the water and sanitation department, in, in specifically in the water demand management section. So, it is our yeah. objective, you know, to ensure, you know, on, a, on you know every day that people are conscientized. And when we talk about conscientizing, we're talking about, you know, the ordinary Joe public the um, scholars and um, you know we need to tap into those you know sponges those young minds you know that can can carry a message and can implement the message and influence you know their parents and everyone at home so we have um, programs for outreach programs for schools we uh, have programs that uh, where we go to businesses to conscientize them and then um, what we've been doing for a number of years also we've got um, you know, people will uh, send us emails and requests. They want to come and see our water treatment plants wow. and our wastewater treatment plants. So that they get to know, you know, what, what effort goes into water yeah. and why it's so important to save it. Now, when we look at um, water in, in, in terms of the natural cycle, what you see out in the rivers, uh -huh. that's not the water that you drink. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because the city has taken that water it has, you know, stored it in catchments. Okay. We've taken care of that water. Yeah. We've treated it. We've given it, you know, we've raised the standard of the quality of that water. And that water itself complies with the South African National Standard 241. Okay. Which is a specific standard for drinking water to ensure that when our people access the water, which in Cape Town, your water's on tap, you know, so you've got this SANS 241, which is also in terms of another government standard is blue drop quality, which is again an, another national program that the National Department of Water and Sanitation has introduced in 2008 already. 
and this city has successively, you know, obtained the blue drop status for drinking water. So when you have this lovely, uh, you know, uh, good quality um, and life preserving, you know, commodity coming your way on tap, why should you waste it? Yeah. And also, I want to ask you a very important question, Mr. Farouk. Um, a while ago, we went camping, right? Um, it was on the west coast at Rebecca Castell. And when we got to this place, there was like a massive sign on the tap that said, uh, do not drink tap water. Uh, my one friend, obviously, then did drink from the water, and she was like sick, sick, sick. Would you, do you perhaps know why that was? Yes. I think the first thing is one is to um, acknowledge is the fact when there is specific signage is there with an intention yeah <laughs> so whoever put that signage there put it there to protect themselves against litigation and and they also protected possible consumers of that you know because um, if the water is not safe they you are forewarned yeah that this water could be contaminated and for that purpose they they have warned people so when they say please don't drink Stay away from it. <laughs> I mean, that is legitimate signage. But it is because of the, the character of water. Mm. You know, the, the, the chemical characteristics. It may also be infected with biological material, you know, um, what's it, or bacteria and other organisms in the water. So the owner of, of that piece of land most probably said, well, you know, anyone coming no. past here, we need to protect them. And also, uh, Mr. Farouk, um, you guys at your department, do you guys like have any campaigns lined up um, speaking to the youth, especially about how to save water? Yes, we, we constantly have initiatives, you know, to engage. You know, when, when I said we deal with the scholars, we deal with any organization that comes um, to us and puts out a request for us, you know, to um, come and do some water awareness. We even have... Um, revamped okay. our water and sanitation website. You know, there's a specific um, section that speaks about water saving. You know, um, as we know, currently the city of Cape Town is at level two water restrictions, which means it's even more important for our residents, all our consumers, yeah. to start um, reviewing their water using uh, usage um, practices, you know, so every time you go to the tap, you must ask yourself, is it necessary to go to the tap? How much water do I really require? Is water really required? Can't I use a broom? <laughs> Can't I use any other mechanism, uh, but not water? Why would you want, you know, and I've got to reiterate this, why would you want a product that has gone through yeah. a tremendous lot of effort? You know, we, we, we bring, in Cape Town, we bring water from as far as Water Skulov. Wow. Full Flay. We bring it yeah. from Full Flay, roughly 115 kilometers from the center of Cape Town. You know, so our water comes from more beyond the boundaries of the city of Cape Town. And then when we treat that water, we take it through a number of stages of purification to get it ultimately to within the standard. And then also, as part of that, we have big infrastructure that we've got to maintain, which is. Um, from your water treatment facilities, your pipeline, your, yeah. your reservoirs, and, and down the whole train. And in that entire process, monitoring happens. Yeah, it's a very long process, and we, we really need to take that into consideration, which is very, very important. Right about now, guys, let's go for a quick ad break. Do not go anywhere, because when we come back, this topic in studio will continue around how to save water. We'll see you back right after this.